Hey guys, I've recorded a few videos tonight. Got a lot to say for myself tonight. So, um, you know, I'm gonna make a video about what I want to talk about faith. And the reason I want to talk about faith is because. I went on a journey with faith where I went from having no faith in uh, in humanity. I had no faith in humanity and then I had faith in humanity and now as I stand talking to you now, I no longer have any faith in humanity again. So I think that's interesting to speak about for people and I know a lot of you will be thinking, what? What's going on here? So have a listen, you'll see what I mean because I don't think anyone should have faith in humanity. If you give it a chance, you don't need to. So, when I began my journey here in Tanzania, I had no faith in humanity. And my journey in Tanzania is where it began for me on a spiritual journey as well. Because when I set out on this, following my spiritual sign to do what I did, uh, I'd lost hope in human. I had no faith. I had no faith in humanity. But it took me some time to realize why that was. Now, the closest relationship you have with humanity is yourself. You are the closest relationship you will ever have with humanity. So as you look at yourself, you are the representation of humanity to yourself. If you realize it or not, you are the representative for that collective for yourself. So if you look in at yourself, or I looked in at myself back then, and the way I lived my life, then I didn't live in a way that would give me any faith in humanity. As I was a representation of the collective, I believed most people were like me, most people were like I was, and I didn't live in a way which provided me with any faith in humanity whatsoever. I would go out drinking, I would just spend money on myself, and I never gave much thought for other people. And I'm not saying everyone's like that, but I was like that at once in my life. I didn't give much thought to other people. I was always thinking about how to make some money and, and things of this nature, you know, and, and how to enjoy myself, how to entertain and distract myself. This is always what was on the forefront of my mind. And I'd spend money on, you know, on, on stuff to that, to that nature, like alcohol and, um, uh, you know, going out for nights out or going for whatever. You know how it is in the West, the distractions are endless. The bottomless pit of desires, as I say. Well, you're quite easy to, you can go quite deep into them if you live in a Western capitalist system, that's for sure. So it is a bottomless pit, you'll never fulfill your desires going into them. So what happened was, I realized I slowly began to reach out. As you know, I came here and I decided I was going to live my life due to a spiritual calling to try and help others. I changed my mind. I no longer wanted to use what I learned uh, about caring for myself and making money in the West for myself. I wanted to do it for other people. And you can do that too, you know. If some people, are, a lot of people are lost in there, maybe have their own business or uh, studying whatever, you know, and they still feel this emptiness around it, then you can do that as well. You can learn these skills and then implement them on the world, not for profit, but to make your profit an educated child, make your profit a child with food in their belly, make your profit a child um, with medical care, or man, woman, or child, you know, or whatever, animal, whatever. You can do that. You can turn your skills uh, and live a life where, you can, you can live a meager life where your profit is the benefit of others. This is what you can do. Um, even if you're a business person in the West right now, I'm not saying everyone should do that because as I've said in other videos, you know, I wouldn't even have medication to give these children if it weren't for business people. Uh, I wouldn't have a mattress for them to lay on if it weren't for business people. We need business people. But if you're not feeling fulfilled, if that's not the way you want to express yourself, it's just you've gotten caught up in that in the West, 
you can be a business person whose profit margins boil down to, if you want to put it that way, I guess, uh, it's business, business per I don't see myself as a business person, but if you want to look at it that way, you can say, okay, this year, uh, the profit that I made from my work was uh, this many children got an education. And you'll find that you can do the thing that you're trained to do, that you have that ability to do, um, but you can do it in a more fulfilling manner, perhaps. So, I'll just we can all do that anyway. So, uh, as I was saying, as I got sidetracked, as I would reach out and do more, I began to think to myself, I can't be the only person, obviously, reaching out and doing more. And I lived a standard Western life. There, weren't that, there wasn't a great deal of talk of charity in amongst the people I, I uh, socialized with. I love them all still, and I loved them all back then. Uh, but, you know, we didn't, we weren't a charitable bunch. I wasn't charitable at all. And uh, certainly some of my friends in history were in, not in the least bit, you know, charity. Uh, some of them were the polar opposite, I guess. Uh, so, as I began to reach out and help more people, I began to think, well, surely there's other people doing this. So my faith in humanity began to grow. Because the closest relationship with humanity I had was me, and I began to become a positive relationship, you know. So, as time progressed, of course, my faith grew. The more people I helped, the more I believed other people might be doing this as well. But eventually, it got to this point where I, I, I realized something. I went, you know what? I don't have faith in humanity anymore. Because, and I'll put it this way, do you need to have faith that I'm talking to you now on this video? Do I need to have faith that I'm holding a camera and videoing myself talking? No, I know I am. And you know I'm talking to you now. So thankfully, I got to this point where, okay, I should add this in. It got to a point where I could no longer help other people with my own resources, as you know. Um, naturally, they were limited and they were done with. So I was placed in this new position in my life where the only way I could help the part of humanity I wanted to help was to call on the humanity I didn't have faith in to help it. So I did. And every single week, new humans appeared who saw the world like I did. They, want, they believed in sharing. They believed that that should come first. They no longer believed, perhaps they did or didn't, uh, at one point in their life, believe that, that having material wealth mattered. But these people didn't believe in that if they did believe in it. In history, they didn't believe in it anymore. Some of them might never have believed in it, is what I'm trying to say. Some of them might have just naturally have been caring, sharing people from birth, which is a wonderful thing, because uh, I'm not saying I wasn't caring and sharing from birth. I think I was kind of caring, but I got lost in amongst the idea of making money, let's put it that way. So, as I reached out into humanity, the humanity I had little to no faith in, it began to reach back. And I was saying to humanity, there's this child here, and this child has no food, no clothes, they're laboring, it's wrong. I was like, it's wrong. There's a pocket of humanity here, there's a child within humanity who has nothing, and it's not right, it's not fair, it's not just. It should not be happening. And I'd say that to people, and they'd say, I'm with you, I, I, I agree, let me help. Let me help, let me help. And it kept happening, and I realized that calling on humanity helped me to gain more faith in it but whereas in, his, in my life in history I wouldn't have called on humanity and the more I said to people it's not right there shouldn't be children suffering on the floor next to us it shouldn't be happening and I, you know a lot of people say there's not a child on the floor next to me but you know if you could walk underwater when you come up the other side then you're going to be on the same floor as those children when you come out the other side of the ocean. The floor is all connected, it just seems humanity's forgotten that the floor they stand on is the floor where they know right now men, women and children are suffering and starving and haven't got medical care. So anyway, I reached out to humanity, I asked humanity to reach back into this part, this part of humanity that was struggling more than they were, and they helped. And then it got to a point where I didn't need faith anymore. I just know. And right now I stand here telling you as one of the luckiest men on earth possibly. Because I am one of the ones who have tested humanity. And I've said, please help. And I've got 387 children in full-time education now. Because humanity did it. Humanity said, I'm not having that. I'm not having children labor without school, without food, without a home. And humanity said, I'm not taking that. And they reached in and they did it. Humanity did that. So this is why you shouldn't have faith in humanity. Live your life in a way 
where you force humanity to give you so much faith in it that you just know that humanity will sort out the problems on this planet because it will sort them out you just need to give it a chance you just need to test it and the more of us go and do that the more of us that reach out and share the more of us that push other people to reach out and share the more not push the more of us ask other people the more of us get out in the world and break through the barrier of the controlled media which is in the west at the moment that doesn't show you about places like this and the struggles and the troubles that they're having and the ability we have to end that as uh, not always but a lot of people have the ability to help end that if the more of us get out and do that then eventually Everybody will just know that humanity can sort it out. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're agnostic, atheist, Christian, Buddhist, Islamic, anything. It doesn't matter. You can all find that common ground. And this is something amazing about the love of humanity. We can all find common ground. We all find examples of the love of humanity everywhere we go, every single day. Even if it's just in the mother's love for her child, we can see examples of it. And you can put your faith in that love of humanity. And once you put your faith in it, I promise you, if you ask it to help, if you watch, it will help. And it will provide you with so much faith that you'll become like I am, as I say, possibly one of the luckiest men on earth, where I no longer need to have faith in humanity. Because I know humanity is going to do it. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. We're on our way. So, if you don't have faith in humanity and you can't see what I can see, it starts with you. It starts with you. Live in a way that would give you faith in humanity if the person that is you was the representation of the collective. And when you start doing that, your faith in humanity will grow. And then you'll come to the place where I'm at now, where I dare call, I, I, I dare take in four cerebral palsy children into my care having known nothing about it without any income because I know I know that humanity has an innate goodness. And when I say to humanity, I need your help, not me, I, I need your help with these children, then I know, <laughs> I know that humanity will say yes. And this is why I dare say yes as well. I dare say yes because I know I've got humanity fighting my corner. And it's the love of humanity that's done everything we do here. It's the love of humanity that puts a roof and food in the bellies of these children in the house next to me. And it's not me, it's humanity. All I do is ask humanity to prove to me. And it did. It did. So now I need to show the people I feel that you too need to let humanity prove it to you. And it will. Okay, so okay. I'm going to get off. Um, live in a way that if you watch that person living, you would say, I have faith in humanity. Before you know it, you'll come to the point where you no longer need faith. You won't need faith. You'll just know. You'll just know that the love of humanity will do it. And we can all find that as a common union, as a common ground to step on. It doesn't matter what our faith, what our religion, oh, anything. It doesn't matter what your beliefs are. If you can just believe in the love of humanity, then we can all work in union until we ensure that the whole of humanity is provided for. And then we can get on with the other parts of life, like entertainment and stuff like this. But for now, let's all try and focus on making sure that there's no human suffering within the family that is our humanity. Okay. There's a saying in Korea, and I quite like it. Korea's uh, teaching from... It's, uh, it's peppered with Vedic stuff and stuff like this. You'll have to look it up. But in Korea, uh, they say, I have only one religion, and that religion is humanity. And I often borrow that because if our one religion is humanity, then we need not bicker. We need not bicker because we can all connect with human love because we all have it. So and we all see it. Okay. Bye, guys. Sometimes I lay